Hey guys, this is Coffee Grump again. Uh, we're going to talk about the uh, Combi machines, which is uh, the BCO version and the COM version. Uh, they're pretty much close to the same thing. Um, just one is more stylish and updated. This one's the first generation. But a lot of people have problems with these units where the espresso side doesn't work or the coffee side doesn't, doesn't function. One of the two sides. So we're gonna take a look at that the reasons why and uh, hopefully uh, find a solution on our journey from taking tearing it down for you to fix your own unit okay so we are going to get into the tear down um, just remember these two units are, are pretty much the same inside a uh, little bit of differences but not any concern so we're only going to tear down the com today uh, we're going to set the bco aside but they really do tear down the same way and the problems that um, one has or the other has are pretty identical. So we'll, we'll talk about on that along the way. So I'll just take this guy down, give ourselves more room. Um, we do need some tools today, uh, very specific tool. Um, the DeLonghi special tool, it's a special Torx with the hole in the middle. And um, that's a T20. We definitely need that guy. We need a long Phillips screwdriver to get into some uh, deep crevices on the unit. I also like to keep a short Phillips screwdriver. And just in case, I have needle nose and I also have my trusty pick. There we go. So, um, just a little bit about this machine. Very common issues on this unit. Um, where you'll have steam coming out the front that's uh, usually a water line or an o-ring that goes and we'll, we'll take a look at that um, your coffee side your coffee side might not work but your espresso side does um, we're definitely going to take a look at that or vice versa your espresso side doesn't work your coffee does so um, it's usually one or the other but they are actually separate parts of the machine and we're gonna get right in there and show you how to repair that with we'll add some part numbers at the end and uh, definitely keep this video for reference okay so before we start I'm just gonna slide our tools to the side uh, one thing I want always want to start with I want to take off all the pieces that I don't need near the machine while I'm doing this and of course the carafe because I don't want to break any glass I'm gonna pull out the drip tray. Um, there's also a lid here. It can just pop, pop out with your hand. Just tug it on one corner, keep that safe. I'm gonna pull the reservoir out and the cappuccino wand. I'm just gonna dismantle that. So at this point, we've got everything off the machine. Um, and we're gonna, oh, one more item. I'm going to take the knob off for the steam and that's where your pick can come in handy. I just get it in between the machine and the knob and just give it a wedge. And there we go. If you wonder about that spring, make sure it comes on the knob. If it falls inside, you'll be able to retrieve it, but make sure you just stick it back on the knob. It keeps the knob on there nice and tight. So where I want to start with this unit is I'm going to turn the unit over to get to the bottom and uh, that'll also be in position for me to take off the top but I don't want to scratch the top so I'm always going to put down some kind of towel or um, cloth to lay the top on so it doesn't get damaged and there we go. So now I've got the unit upside down. I have access to the bottom and I have access to a few screws that I need to remove here. Um, so I'm gonna start with the short Phillips and I'm gonna remove two screws here and two more screws right inside here. Um, just keep an eye on these two screws because they're very shallow screws and you wanna make sure the shallow ones go back in that position. If you put these longer screws in, it'll actually puncture right through the top and make 
the top very not very nice you can see the the difference in sizing there and there we go so we got our four screws out for the top now we're gonna do the bottom so we have to take the bottom off to access um, the rest of the machine um, to expose it we're gonna use our security tor torques and um, I believe there's five screws up top here one there's the screw that it needs that special screwdriver and I'll just set them aside there's not no symmetry where these screws are placed you're just gonna have to find the holes and oh, that's not one this is one I think this was missing one screw back here, but basically we have um, one, two, three, four, five, and I believe six here. So either five or six screws, but when you're on top of the machine, you'll be able to recognize the screws that you need to pull out. So at this point, it releases the bottom and I can actually separate the bottom. Oh, one more thing. We're going to go to the back of the machine. We have two black screws with the security torques. And once we get these out, it'll release the whole bottom. It's pretty easy to remember. The black ones are for the customer facing screw, which is in the back, not necessarily customer facing, but that's what you would see if you had the machine not taken apart. So, what we need to do is just pull this guy out. So with your base off, it really exposes a lot of the inside of the machine. Um, let me just set up a little bit uh, better and then we'll take a, a look down into the machine. All right, so here we are. This is an introduction to the inside of the machine, the bottom of the machine. The top part we'll just look at in just a minute. but. Here's where all the magic happens for your brewed pot of coffee. What happens is your heater, your element here, heats up the water and it actually forces it up in into your pot of coffee. Um, there's a check valve in this hose so it only goes one way. The biggest problem with this unit, and this unit has been updated to a different uh, 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 bracket, um, it's one of these uh, fusible wires that fail. And what happens is there's a fuse right in there that will pop and it won't heat anymore. So when you press to make coffee, everything's normal, but you don't get any heat, you don't get any coffee, you don't get any movement. And usually it's this guy here. Now, this here is another, um, we call it a TCO, a thermal cutout. Um, but this is, these guys here are also TCOs. It's very well protective electrically. So if something goes wrong, it's going to fail here. Now this is for your brewed pot of coffee. And um, in this particular machine, this black wire had failed. I had to dismantle it and replace it. I've tested it and that's what the, what the deal was. So I can also show you how to test it, but we'll get to that in a little bit. And over on this side, I'm just going to move the electrical plug out of the way. I know I probably don't have to say it, but I'm going to say it. Always work on your machine not plugged into the wall uh, for risk of shock. 
And uh, if your machine is hot in any part of the machine, you want to let it cool down before you start messing around with it. So on this side, have a little inline filter. We have our pump and we have our safety valve. If the pressure gets too high for the brew system or the espresso system, your safety valve will push the water out into your drip tray right there. And uh, it's designed that way. If anything were to ever happen, it's got a way to go instead of burning out the pump. So with that said, um, I'm just going to turn the machine over and we are going to take a look at the top that we dismantled as well. And uh, then we'll start taking some more apart. Um, for the most part, the top is released now. We just have a few more steps to go. There's our filter holder. Um, one thing I de really definitely want to emphasize is people will put the brand new filter in with the machine and forget it for a very, very long time. It goes very gross. Um, you're supposed to change that filter, I believe, every 800 pots of coffee. And sorry, 300 pots of coffee and um, or six months. So if you don't change that, I'm going to show you what it looks like if you don't. There we go. Here's one that's actually turned a little bit of color and it's got quite a bit of scale down there. It's not pretty. So you have two options. Um, the filters are very cheap. Change your filter every six months, put it in your phone or run it without a filter because I definitely don't want to be drinking from that where water's going through that. So anyways, a little bit of a helpful hint. There we go. So we're going to keep this guy out. A um, couple more screws to go. Just right at the back here, I have two screws here and one there. They are Phillips screws and they're small. So try not to lose them. Okay, so now we are at the point where the top can actually come off. And I'm just going to grab the front, wiggle it up, and there we go. Just be careful of this, try not to bend it. Um, that's where that one bottom screw goes into. Okay, and that exposes our top. So that concludes the uh, first part of the breakdown. If you're looking to have the complete breakdown you can purchase that in the links below and you'll get the full breakdown and the reassemble and uh, a lot of detail about the parts and what can go wrong and what can go right with your machine thanks for watching coffee ground